Kudos to you for cutting out parabens, swapping your shampoo, and even buying glass containers for your food. But no one told you that canned chickpeas might be damaging your fertility. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhart, a PhD toxicologist and mom of two, and I've spent decades studying how everyday chemicals impact our health. This video walks you through the science, what to avoid, what's overblown, and what actually impacts your hormones. So you can make smarter swaps, skip the fear spiral, and stop wondering if you're missing something dangerous. Really quickly, before we get into it, my team tells me that over 80% of people watching are not yet subscribed. If you've been following this channel for a while, it's definitely worth subscribing. Not only is it free, but it helps these videos reach more people who actually need them, and it genuinely supports the work that we're doing here. Thank you so much. Let's say you're eating organic, you've already ditched plastic water bottles, and you're reading every single ingredient label. So why does it feel like something is still being missed? Why are so many health conscious women still seeing unexplained fertility struggles? Maybe you're tracking your cycle religiously, drinking only filtered water and eating nutrient dense meals and still IVF results might be coming back with disappointment. But here's the thing, the wellness world focuses so much, too much in my opinion, on what to add. Like take these supplements, eat these superfoods, try seed cycling, do this type of workout. But the more invisible exposures, especially the ones from packaging and plastics are pretty much ignored. Even low level exposure to plastic chemicals can interfere with egg quality despite all your clean habits. And because advice is scattered, often watered down, women are not told how everyday products interact with the hormones that regulate our ovulation, fertility, fertilization, and implantation. So while you're focused on your healthy habits, these low level plastic exposures can still interfere with reproductive hormones. And that's why understanding what you're being exposed to matters so much. You probably wouldn't expect something as simple as canned chickpeas to impact your fertility. But what if the danger is not in the food itself, but rather in the can? Think about that weekly meal prep where you've tossed BPA-free canned chickpeas or some other beans into your salad feeling like you've made a healthy choice. Here's what most people don't know. Nearly all canned foods are lined with bisphenols like BPA. Even if it says BPA-free, other similar BP chemicals are being used in their place. So let's think about it for a second. The foods inside have not changed, but yet somehow they're magically BPA free, yet they're not yet rusting or corroding. That's because they're using these other bisphenols and they are not covalently or strongly bound to the canned material itself and can leach under certain conditions. Particularly when the food in those cans is acidic, fatty, or subjected to heat exposure. And BPA isn't just a vague toxin. It has a direct impact on your ovarian follicles, specifically on granulosa cells that support hormone production and egg maturation. So actually during my PhD years, when I was in the lab, I studied how oxidative stress harms granulosa cells and how antioxidants like glutathione might protect them. And so just to let you know what granulosa cells are, they are the layer of cells that surrounds your oocyte, which is the actual egg. So in your ovary, you have many follicles. You're born with a certain number of follicles, a finite number to be exact. And every month when you have a cycle, a certain number of follicles is recruited into what's known as the growing pool. So you might have five follicles that are being recruited. Once your cycle reaches ovulation, there's only one dominant follicle and the rest that were selected will die off. And that one dominant follicle needs to be healthy enough and be able to respond to the hormonal signals that your body is producing naturally on their own in order to rupture and release the egg. Okay, so it's a very complicated process. A lot of things can go wrong. And unfortunately, many of the chemicals that we're being exposed to through things like can linings can directly impact the granulosa cells, which then impact whether or not you ovulate and whether or not your follicle, or excuse me, your oocyte, the egg, is still healthy or not. So this is really important to understand, especially if you are looking to get pregnant, 
or wondering why you might be having irregular cycles, why you're not ovulating. So the data is clear. When the cells are damaged, the granulosa cells and theca cells around the egg, egg quality suffers. And there are so many peer reviewed studies to confirm this. So maybe you've already checked for BPA free labels. That's great. But what if those labels are giving a false sense of security, AKA a scam? So let's say you swapped out every can in your pantry with ones that are labeled as BPA free, feeling like you've checked that box for good. And manufacturers love to slap on those labels because they know consumers are onto them, but they're replacing them with nearly identical chemicals, BPF, BPS, and others. They're part of the same chemical family. And to make things worse, these alternatives are not better and some of them are actually worse. In fact, many studies suggest that they may be just as harmful or worse. Why? Because their molecular structure is nearly identical to BPA. They behave pretty much the same way, like twins inside the body, especially in hormone sensitive tissues like your reproductive organs. So it's like swapping one key for another that looks almost the same. And these substitutes still unlock the same hormonal pathways bind to the same receptors and set off similar patterns of damaging cells and ovarian tissue. And so this is one reason why so many women feel like they're getting everything right, yet still getting poor results. So when the label says BPA free, the alternatives act the same way, which means those swaps may not protect your reproductive health the way that you think. So one simple swap, if you want to enjoy beans, which I do, and I don't want the extra dose of bisphenols from can linings, even if it says BPA free, I have actually found beans in glass jars by the brand Jovial, and you can find them at health food stores like Sprouts. I've seen them at Whole Foods. You can also order them online. So if you're someone who likes to regularly consume beans and you don't necessarily want to go through soaking and cooking them on your own, that is definitely another way that you can do it to avoid plastics and these types of chemicals. But if you don't and you have the budget, then looking into the glass jar beans is a worthwhile Thing to do. And that's not all. You're meal prepping, using leftovers, and keeping snacks fresh for your kids. But how often are you thinking about what those foods are stored in? Maybe you pack some roasted sweet potatoes that you made at home in a plastic container or wrapped leftover salmon in plastic wrap, thinking it was no big deal. Here's the problem. Flexible plastics like wraps, bags, and soft containers often contain phthalates. And phthalates are plasticizer chemicals that are notorious for migrating into food, especially fatty or oily foods, and even at room temperature, and especially when it's heated. So if you start noticing the trends here, these chemicals are leaching in the presence of acid, fat, and heat. And these exposures might seem small, but they are building up because most of us are exposed continuously. And studies are now showing clear links between phthalates and reduced ovarian reserve. We're also seeing lower IVF success rates in women with higher phthalate levels in their bodies when they appear otherwise healthy. And that means even if your hormones look fine on paper, you look fine on paper, your other biomarkers are checking out, phthalates can still interfere with how your eggs respond. So when you store food or wrap it in plastic, it creates an easy pathway for these phthalates, not only to reach your meals, but over time to leach into your food, which you're then eating, and then that could potentially lower your egg quality and reproductive success. Here's a toxic combo no one talks about, plastic plus heat. I know it's tempting to microwave your food in the same container you brought it home in, or toss a hot lunch into a plastic bowl. But let's think about what actually happens when you mix heat with plastic. So picture reheating some homemade soup in a plastic container straight from the fridge or pouring hot leftovers into a plastic tub before you head out the door. Here's the problem. Heat accelerates chemical leaching dramatically, whether it's the microwave, dishwasher, or just hot food touching that plastic. The heat drives plasticizers and microplastics out of that material and directly into your food. And recent research has even found microplastics in human placentas 
and in infant meconium, meaning the first bowel movement that your baby has. That is an indicator that your baby could be exposed to microplastics in the womb even before he or she is born. These particles can interfere with cellular signaling, mitochondrial function, both of which are critical for egg development. Not only that, but they can contribute to oxidative stress, which also impacts fertility. So when plastic gets hot, it's releasing more of these chemicals into your food. And that's why even these seemingly small daily habits like microwaving leftovers could be impacting your fertility. And IVF is often seen as a safety net or a backup plan. But what if those same hormone treatments that make you even more sensitive to toxins? You might be doing everything right during stimulation, like ditching fragrances, eating organic, taking your prenatals, but still using plastic food storage or drink storage without a second thought. During ovarian stimulation, your follicles are in overdrive. They are growing rapidly under the influence of powerful hormones. That makes them more reactive, more exposed, and even more vulnerable to endocrine disrupting chemicals. Even low doses of BPA or phthalates during this time can interfere with fertilization, embryo development, and implantation. And studies have shown that women with higher levels of these chemicals in their bodies often retrieve fewer mature eggs and the embryos that do form may be of lower quality. So while IVF boosts your hormone levels, it also amplifies your sensitivity. And that means even low doses of endocrine disruptors can impact egg quality. Most fertility content focuses on what to take but the real power might be in what you take away. So how do you start removing the worst offenders? Maybe you're standing in the supplement aisle wondering whether another capsule is the missing piece when the real shift might come from what you take off your shelves and out of your plate instead. So start simple, replace canned foods, let's say beans with dry beans, frozen produce, or food in glass jars. Use glass, stainless steel, or silicone containers for leftovers, but do not heat silicone. I do not recommend that. And definitely do not microwave in plastic. And avoid heating food in anything that touches plastic, even the lid. Be skeptical of BPA-free labels. And if it's plastic, especially soft plastic, assume that it will leach. So remember that we want to strive for consistency over perfection, because when you take harmful exposures like phthalates and bisphenols off your plate, you give your hormones more space to function. And that's why removing the right things can be more powerful than adding more. You just learned how even BPA-free food containers and plastic wrap can disrupt your fertility. But what if your daily exposure is coming from something even more intimate, like your underwear or your socks? In this next video, I'll show you how big name brands are hiding hormone disrupting chemicals in your basics, the ones that your family wears every day, and the simple swaps that actually protect your health. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.